What is happening, everyone? Welcome to K8MRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. You are watching Mailbag Monday. Number 26. Guys, if you have an amateur radio question, shoot me an email. K8MRD at iCloud.com. In the subject, just put Mailbag Monday. That way I can be sure to see it and hopefully get your question answered for you. Got a couple good questions for you this week. And without any further ado or delays in getting to the point... I would like to dive right in to our first question <laughs> that has to do with charging batteries. This viewer asks two questions. First, what wire do you like best for making an antenna like an NFED half wave? So we've covered that about a million times on the channel, uh, but I'll answer it very quickly. Uh, Poly Stealth Wire from AmateurRadioSupplies.com and Soda Beams Wire, both 26 gauge wire. Uh, from soda beams. I will leave links in the description below Second can you connect your charger to a lipo battery? I'm gonna go with lithium iron phosphate because I don't do lipo batteries Via the barrel connector and connect another battery to the first one with the power pole connections to charge both batteries at the same time Eddie whiskey 5 Lima Sierra Tango. So Eddie, that's a great question and one that we're gonna answer here in just a second but before we hop over on uh, the old bench there and show you what the heck is going on. I want to be very clear. Don't try anything that you're about to see unless you really know what the heck you're doing. Uh, the currents that can come out of lithium iron phosphate batteries uh, can be quite large. And at the very least, you could possibly damage your batteries. At the most, you could shock yourself and kill yourself. So don't do anything stupid. <laughs> there's, your, there's your disclaimer. But I think this is a neat question. So let's hop over to the bench and we'll talk about charging batteries. In order to answer this question properly, let's first take a look at a couple lithium iron phosphate batteries that are wired in parallel. So you'll notice we have one power pole connection. We have our red going to the positive of battery one, and then that's jumping over to the positive of battery two. We have our black that's going to the negative of battery two, and the black going to the negative of battery one. And what this does is double the capacity of the battery pack without raising the voltage. So essentially we're already doing what you're asking here. And if we plug our watt meter in, you'll see we have 13.16 volts, okay? Now if we plug a charger in here, you will see the charging current go up and the voltage go up. Both battery packs are being charged at the same time. So that's kind of what's happening. Now what you want to do is plug in both batteries with the power poles and charge battery B off of battery A with one charger input. And in all reality, all we're doing is connecting these batteries much like we did with the other battery pack. But to show you what's going on, I'm going to hook some inline watt meters up so we can actually see uh, the flow of power. So the first thing I want to do, let's check the voltages of both batteries. We'll call this battery A, we're at 13.4 volts, okay? Call this battery B, which is at about 13.17 volts. Now I have a couple power pole, two banana plug adapters, and I'm just gonna leave these coiled up just so I don't make a big mess of cables here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect all of this up together. I'm gonna connect that charging cable. I'm going to connect this barrel connector, and this is just going to show us what the voltage is for battery B as this happens. I'm going to take this inline watt meter, and I'm just going to put it in line between the two batteries, but I'm not going to connect them yet. I want to connect this watt meter to this battery just so we can monitor the voltage. And this, this meter is going to show us the current flow between battery A and battery B. This watt meter is coming from our charger and will be connected to these power poles, which is this barrel input here. So now we're gonna go ahead and connect our batteries. And you can see we're already pulling about a quarter of an amp, three quarters of an amp rather, from battery A to battery B. So now we're gonna plug in our charger. This is a six amp charger. And we're putting in mm, 4.6 amps into battery A. Battery B is taking uh, 2.83 amps of current from that. And we can see the voltage 
on battery A, or excuse me, battery B has gone up from 13.17 or so, I think it was, to 13.6. So yes, it is working. Why you would want to do this is beyond me, but I guess, you know, could two birds stoned at once. And just like that, after about an hour or so with these batteries, we can see there is almost no current going through. The light on the charger is green. Everything is charged up. 14.3 volts there, 14.4 volts there. It works. See, that was pretty cool. Nice little experiment. Great question. Thanks for asking and thanks for writing in. Next up, we have a question about my nemesis. That's right, the MFJ1899T antenna. And this viewer writes, Mike, I have a question about the MFJ1899T antenna. Hey, I just said that. <laughs> I watched your review video some time ago on this. My question is, using the coil from the antenna and putting an MFJ17 foot whip on it instead of the provided whip, would it work better? Would the coil work something like the coil on a buddy pole or a Wolf River coils? So that is a fantastic question, and I like where your head's at. So let's take a look at first, for those of you that don't know my Nemesis antenna, this is it, the MFJ1899T. And what it is, you have a basically a loading coil here that has taps in multiple places that are going to get you uh, resonant on multiple bands. And boy, I want this antenna to work more than any antenna in my arsenal. And the bottom line is, uh, this antenna just doesn't really perform very well. Uh, it's, you know, oftentimes if, if it's too good to be true, it is. The way this is designed, like I said, you've got this loading coil and then you have this whip that extends, okay? And it's approximately five feet and that's the antenna. So it's designed to, your BNC is gonna be held there onto the radio or some kind of tripod or something and that's your antenna, right? So. What we're asking is, can you use the MFJ 1979? Now this is a 17-foot telescopic whip, and if I extended it all the way out, we'd be able to go into the other room there, okay? Right off the bat, this has a 3 8 uh, thread on it here, and so does the MFJ 1899T. So. Mail to mail don't work. But what if we have a little adapter like such, okay? Now we can screw this in. So in theory, we have a 17 foot whip on the uh, 1899T's coil. Here's where things start to go south. Well, they started to go south when I bought this antenna. But this 17 foot whip, when it's 17 feet in the air, it's gonna be a bit wobbly. So number one, you can, you can see how the BNC has a little bit of give. Now that's not a fault, that's by design, there's a spring in there, okay? But to have the weight of this all the way up, uh, even if you had it on a tripod, I would suspect this would break right off, okay? The other thing, and here's the bigger problem, these coils are tapped specifically to work with this little five foot whip, okay? they're not designed to be used with this ginormous 17 foot antenna, okay? So basically what would happen is, this tap right here is the tap for 20 meters if we had this uh, factory whip on it, okay? But we're completely throwing off the inductance when we add a bigger antenna like this. So it, it's not gonna work at all, okay? These are kind of, these are designed to just work together, work, Okay, I mean, can you make contacts on this? Yes, are you gonna have good luck? Probably not. So that's why by having something like the Wolf River coils, this coil is constant, but I can tap this anywhere. I can raise this collar wherever I want. I can turn it, you can see where the metal is in there. So now we're, we're just adjusting that axis as opposed to kind of going up and down. So we can basically tap this coil anywhere we want. That is why 
we can use the 17 foot whip with this. Now keep in mind this 17 foot whip is already resonant on 20 meters. So you don't need the coil at all unless you wanted to just shorten this a touch, add a little bit of inductance and uh, get on the air. But you can use different size whips. So this is, uh, I think the, the five or six foot whip that, that you can get if you buy like the soda special with the Wolf River coils. I think it's a five foot whip. So I can use a different length whip with the Wolf River coils because where I basically don't need any bit of coil with the 17 foot whip, when I have the five foot whip on there, I can drop this down a little bit, find the sweet spot to where the inductance is right to get resonant with a shorter five foot whip because I can tap it anywhere I want. So uh, my advice to you, this isn't really part of your question, but don't buy this antenna do buy this antenna. Wolf River Coils is a fantastic antenna. MFJ 1899T, not so much. So hopefully that sheds some light on the subject. But uh, great thinking. I, I Like I said, I like where your head's at now. If you were to make something like this uh, and, and make it so you can tap it wherever you wanted, then yeah, knock yourself out. I would still not trust this BNC. If it had an SO, or, uh, PL259 on here, it would be a bit more rigid, I would suspect. So... Yeah, now you know the rest of the story. And that's all we got for this week, gang. I hope to see some of you at the Huntsville Ham Fest this weekend. We'll also be uh, Friday. We'll be playing a little Parks on the Air at Montesano. So if you're in the neighborhood, do stop by. And if you watch this video after the fact, then uh, you just missed the Huntsville Ham Fest. So. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have an amateur radio question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. Just in the subject put Mailbag Monday, and we'll hopefully get your question answered for you. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you again on another episode of k 8 Radio Stuff. 73, guys.